My name is Greg Russell and I got involved with these process, in this process, as these things often do, uh, with an email uh, that came sort of out of the blue. But I was asked to be involved uh, in this process by Neil Pearson and also uh, Doncaster Council and the Doncaster Museum. It's kind of a joint thing between uh, those bodies. And uh, I, yes, yeah, process uh, writing songs about the First World War, which sounded interesting, but I guess it's been done um, a lot in various different ways before. And as I said, there was this uh, heavy Doncaster and South Yorkshire element to it, uh, which is where I've lived for a few years. So it had that extra interesting uh, element for me to get involved. And uh, yeah, and I'd worked with Neil before on a project called Shake the Chains, and uh, that was that went well. That was a successful thing. So it was nice to be asked to be involved in this project. And uh, yeah, so I've, and it's been lovely. I've just sort of turned up and been told what to do, which is always a nice thing to do. So explain to me how this process works. So how have you gone from the First World War to writing a new song? We've gone from the First World War to writing new songs. Uh, we had. Uh, we all had the all the artists in it had a an archive day in which we were taken around Doncaster Museum and also Cusworth Hall and looked at their archives and their exhibits and they are archives and exhibits about the First World War more specifically uh, about you know people from South Yorkshire and Doncaster uh, and their role in the First World War but again probably more specifically the role that people played here the role that people who didn't go for whatever reason played uh, and the aftermath as well. So we try to include quite a lot of the aftermath. Everyone kind of thinks the, world, the First World War stopped when it apparently did, and yet there's this this massive aftermath as well. So we had fantastic archive days with um, with uh, Jude and the team at uh, Doncaster Museum, and they were brilliant, and they gave us a personalised tour of the... Um, of the exhibits and and we went from there we took all that information away and they've been at the other end of again a phone and, a, and an email if we needed it and we just tried to collect as much information as possible as what often happens with these sort of songwriting projects um there's so there's too much to write about you get all of this information and um there's only so much you can write about and you kind of feel a little bit swamped so you go you get all these in all this information and i sort of left it alone for a week and went back to it and thought where on earth do i begin with this and you just kind of find the you know the odd thing that that jumps out you and that might be an overarching thing an overarching idea that for instance ran you know i don't know a, a theme or a, an idea over the whole war or it might be um as has been the case you know writing a song about one specific person or one specific event that happened on a sunday in 1915 whatever so it's kind of yeah just we take it on as much information as possible as much taken in as much as you can read as much watch as much listen to as much stuff as you can and then um take that away and and tell you know three stories in my case i've written three songs in this few days um you know three stories and those stories as range from a load of topics some are very specific and some are a little bit more broad writing songs about the first world war which sounded interesting but i guess it's been done um a lot in various different ways before and as i said there was this uh, heavy doncaster and south yorkshire element to it uh, which is where i've lived for a few years so it had that extra interesting uh, element for me to get involved and uh, yeah and i'd worked with neil before on a project called shake the chains and uh, that was that went well that was a successful thing so it was nice to be asked to be involved in this project and uh, yeah so I've, and it's been lovely i've just sort of turned up and been told what to do which is always a nice thing to do we've gone from the first world war to writing new songs uh, we had we all had the all the artists in it had a an archive day in which we were taken around Doncaster Museum and also Cusworth Hall and looked at their archives and their exhibits and they are archives and exhibits about the First World War more specifically uh, about you know people from South Yorkshire and Doncaster uh, and their role in the First World War but again probably more specifically the role that people played here the role that people who didn't go for whatever reason played uh, and the aftermath as well. So we try to include quite a lot of the aftermath. Everyone kind of thinks the, world, the First World War stopped when it apparently did, and yet there's this this massive aftermath as well. So we had fantastic archive days with um, with uh, Jude and the team at uh, Doncaster Museum, and they were brilliant. And they gave us a personalised tour of the um, 
of the exhibits and and we went from there we took all that information away and they've been at the other end of again a phone and, a, and an email if we needed it and we just tried to collect as much information as possible as what often happens with these sort of songwriting projects um there's so there's too much to write about you get all of this information and um there's only so much you can write about and you kind of feel a little bit swamped so you go you get all these inf all this information and i sort of left it alone for a week and went back to it and thought where on earth do i begin with this and you just kind of find the you know the odd thing that that jumps out you and that might be an overarching thing an overarching idea that for instance ran you know i don't know a, a theme or a, an idea over the whole war or it might be um as has been the case you know writing a song about one specific person or one specific event that happened on a sunday in 1915 whatever so it's kind of yeah just we take taken on as much information as possible as much taken in as much as you can read as much watch as much listen to as much stuff as you can and then um take that away and and tell you know three stories in my case i've written three songs in this few days so yeah and then we've come to this cottage in the middle of the west yorkshire um countryside although there is a main road just up there but it, you kind of feel secluded all you can see where we're sat is trees and uh, and we sat here for three days and and you've got these ideas you've got big ideas you've got loads of information and you've also got you know what you want to the sort of where you want to take the story within that overarching theme uh, and you just sort of sit there and, and all three of us the musicians involved in this project have probably got different ways of writing um, and so I've just sort of been squirreled away uh, in a room upstairs trying to put some ideas down and um, yeah and sort of try and create some songs I interestingly I think one of the big challenges has been there's so much information so much I mean we had such a fantastic day at Cosworth and, and the museum and Donny that it's kind of like, what do I do with all this information? You know, a song, what, between two and a half and five minutes, probably. And you've got at literally a day's worth of material. So one of the challenges is kind of knowing what to write about and what not to write about. Uh, and again, that's a very personal thing, but there's only so much you can, there's only so many things you can ring out, really. Um, so it's kind of, you know, finding what you want to write about. Uh, and also, again, people write in different ways, but it's all very well saying you're going to go and sit in a house for three days and write some songs. That's very nice in practice, but whether it actually happens is a different thing. And actually, you've probably got to write. Well, I've not written three. I've written more than three songs. Put it that way. Um, but there's only three that will make the the final cut. So you've got to write some rubbish, and maybe the three that I, I'm still with are rubbish as well. That's not. But uh, but yeah, um, that's so. That's been another challenge. It's kind of writing writing songs on demand can be an interesting thing. <laughs> Um, working friends of the evil, but with God for union you stand, cause your front is in your own land. With God for union you stand, because your front is in your The battered earth 
you walk upon with hedgerows trampled and the flowers gone with streams of blood and flowing men a life of torment to the very end but with God our union you stand cause your front is in your own land but with God our union you stand for your front is in your own land you can try to send the hurt away to France where the laws might let you play but there's more strength than flags and steel in us in all this fight with a ball but with God or union you stand cause your front is in your own but with God, for you and you stand for your front is in your own land. Anarchic and mischievous workers friends and believers with strength and ideology not just anything to set yourself free but with god or you need a new start because you're from is in your own life. But with God, for you and you stand for your front is in your own land. For your front is in your own land. For your front is in your own land.